So RIP FunTouch OS, hello Origin OS. That's right, Vivo is killing off its mobile launcher, FunTouch OS, which despite its rather promising name, was never actually particularly fun. On the fun scale, it's probably about the same level as walking into your parents' bedroom just as they're slipping into their furry costumes. You know, the kind of thing that would screw you up really badly for life and transform you into an alcoholic YouTube tech twat. I would imagine. But stepping into this non-fun shaped void is Origin OS, Vivo's alternative mobile launcher, which boasts smoother design, improved customization, and of course lots of AI bollocks, why not? Now the Vivo X300 flagship phones will be the first Vivo phones to officially come with Origin OS right out of the box, but of course you can expect it to trickle down to older Vivo handsets over the coming months. Vivo kindly let me check out Origin OS ahead of the official release, so here's a quick squint at some of the best features and big changes versus FunTouch OS. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do puck subscribe, ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So as you can see, you got Origin OS running on the X200 Pro, the big bugger on the left. Meanwhile, the X200 FE, the little one, is still running FunTouch OS. And you'll immediately notice some changes with the general look and feel and vibe of the OS. For instance, settings menu now a lot more colourful, slightly differently laid out as well. Highly exciting stuff. Apps tray is pretty much the same. You now do get more app suggestions up top. Still got the good old Google Discover feed, but if you drag down the notifications bar, you'll notice a big change here. In Origin OS, they've split the control center and the notifications bar, so you no longer drag down twice to get the control center. Instead, it's a pull down from the top right edge to get straight into the control center, otherwise you can flip left and right between them. And I know when Samsung started doing things this way in One UI, some people online really took against it with such utter hatred. It was almost as if Samsung had walked unannounced into their living room and punched their cat in the throat. But hey, if you're not a fan, don't worry, drag down that control center, tap the three dots in the top right corner, go to control center settings, and you'll see there's an option in there to revert things back to the way they were. And also in Origin OS, if you pinch on that desktop, go to the home settings, you can now choose what a swipe down on the home screen will do between several different options. You can actually have it directly pulled down into the control center if you find you use that quite a lot. And Origin OS has been built from the ground up completely fresh, so it's smoother for everyday use. And this apparently includes a shorter waiting time for apps to load. So I'm just gonna clear all of the apps from memory and conduct a wee test. We love a bit of benchmark testing. Let's try tapping an app and seeing which phone loads it faster. So with Spotify, seems pretty much neck and neck. What about Audible? Yeah, just slightly faster there on the Origin OS. YouTube, ooh, very close. A lot of Vivo stuff like albums basically loads up instantly anyway. But of course, one of the true tests will be an absolute beast like Weather and Waves. So let's give this a go. And so far, it's loaded up slightly faster on the old FunTouch OS. Oh, yep, yeah, and there we are. We are at the signing complete screen ever so slightly on the older FunTouch OS versus Origin OS. That's further proven that benchmarking is just complete bollocks anyway. Rotation seems to be just as quick on either. So yeah, great fun. I could do this all day. Now, according to Vivo, Origin OS can better prioritize which apps have direct access to your CPU, your memory, all your precious phone resources to ensure that apps that you're actually using run as smoothly as possible, while at the same time juggling up to 47 apps in the ruddy background. And Origin OS certainly seems to cull background tasks a bit faster than the old FunTouch OS. So once again, using Wuther and Waves as an example, I started downloading a 30 gigabyte file on both Origin OS and FunTouch OS, then minimized the games, walked away, and came back 10 minutes later, and it got a lot farther in FunTouch OS compared with Origin OS. That was despite the fact that the download speeds were pretty much the same. And one of the big joys of Origin OS is the boot up the arse for the customization. You'll now find dynamic effects squirreled away in the home screen, lock screen, and wallpaper settings. If you dive on into here, you've got, for instance, new fingerprint sensor animations, including this fun wee git here. Love it. Frankly, it's worth the upgrade just for that alone. And you've also got some fresh animations when you bung a USB cable in the bottom end there, and general charging animations as well. 
Energy is my favourite, but you've also got a bit of sauce, some ripply tide shenanigans, and something called light cloud. Absolutely cracking stuff. You've now also got some fresh new ambient effects as well. So for instance, you can turn your Vivo blower into a sort of mini disco whenever you have music playing in the background. And this can sort of subtly react to whatever music you're playing in apps like Spotify. And you can activate that by again going into dynamic effects and going into ambient lights. As you can see there, works for music as well as incoming calls and notifications. You can customize the schedule for the ambient lights and you can play around with different effects as well. I rather like the bubbly green one. And Origin OS also boasts a whole new font style, Vivo Sans. It'll absolutely blow your bollocks into outer space. And what I really appreciate is the old lock screen in Origin OS is now a lot more customizable. So back in the home screen, lock screen and wallpaper settings, just give lock screen settings a tap. You'll see your current lock screen right there at the top, just tap edit. If you've now got greater depth, so for instance, tap the clock. You've got a couple of different styles and fonts you can choose between. You can obviously switch up the colors as well. Oh, that really doesn't go with the background. Let's revert back to that. And then of course you've got all the classic clocks as well if you miss a bit of all that. You can obviously shift the clock about the place as well if you want to. But if you hit this Wii icon down here in the bottom left, you've also got various different combinations that you can create. And one of my favorite options here is the flip cards. This works well with any short video clips you've got recorded onto your phone. Just select the video clip and then choose a wee section of it. So I'm just going to choose this wee snippet at the very end. And now if we bring up the lock screen and then tilt the phone back and forth, as you can see, that background actually animates. It's completely bloody pointless, of course, but then I'm easily amused, so I rather like it. And it's also now easy to add extra widgets to your lock screen as well. Alarms, weather shenanigans, etc. And back in that home screen, lock screen and wallpaper section of the settings, you'll also find some fresh new always on display options. So for instance, in the origin section, you've got a couple you can choose from here, including this wee animated jobby or some random hoop things. And of course, there's some fresh origin OS wallpaper shenanigans going on as well. Mostly involving floaty ball things. And of course, these animate slightly as you wake up your smartphone and then eventually unlock it. And next up, let's dive back into the settings and go to notifications and status bar. And in there, you'll see a fresh new option, Origin Island. And as with HyperOS version 3 and quite a few other launches recently, this basically mimics Apple's dynamic island shindiggery. Although here, it's not actually needed to help disguise the massive, ugly, floating turd of a camera notch. And this is, of course, fully customizable within the Origin Island settings, so you can activate it or deactivate it for various different functions. You can have it pop up when you're playing some music in the likes of Spotify, for instance. You can quickly tap that Origin Island in order to skip tracks or change what you're listening to. It can also pop up if you're recording audio or if you're navigating somewhere, all kinds of different shenanigans. And apparently this can also throw up a timer when you're waiting for your Honor of Kings hero to respawn if you like that game so you can get on with other stuff while you wait. And I do like how you can use the Origin Island to quickly and easily share files, photos, etc. with other apps. So for instance, this absolutely banging selfie that I took with the X200 Pro, I can grab myself and drag it up to the Origin Island and then quickly share with mates, family, whatever. What a treat for them that will be. And also if we swipe up and hold, so we're in the recent apps section, you can then tap the name of an app and as you'll see, you've got more options now. Go into good old background settings. You can either have those recent apps tiled or stacked. And stacking just has them overlapping like so, so it's a bit easier to flick through. And if you do like your bit of Wuthering Waves, Genshin Impact, whatever else, well, no worries, that Ultra Game Mode is back in action. It will look very familiar to any Vivo fans. Once again, you've got your performance settings. You can choose between three different gaming modes between Battery Saver and Boost. You can also switch up the refresh rate, tweak the brightness, change the network settings, the touch sampling rate. So that's all basically the same as before. And then if we flip into Game Tools, Got a couple of new bits in here, including notifications styles. So as you can see, you can either fully block notifications, but you can also fully block notifications, including any sounds and vibrations. Got an orientation lock, and you've also now got a game timer. 
You can have either a running timer or you can have a countdown clock, though this does max out at 9 minutes, 59 seconds. Can't go any higher than that right now for some reason. But say you're setting yourself a very strict 5 minutes game and break or whatever, you can then set the timer, make it a floating timer so it hangs around in the corner there. And then just a quick tap, that'll start counting down, it'll alert you when you run out of time. But all the usual guff present and correct include an eSports mode for full maximum concentration, frame rate priority, features. You've got enhanced haptics or 4D game vibration as they rather dramatically title it here for a handful of titles including the likes of Call of Duty Mobile etc. And a bit of off-screen autoplay so your game will continue running in the background quite handy for resource gathering titles etc. Reminds me of going to sleep leaving SimCity running on my desktop PC back in the day. Wake up in the morning hoping to have barrelfuls of cash. Actually some git will have fallen asleep in his bed with a cigarette and burn the whole f***ing city down. Now if you poke your way into security and privacy back in those settings, a couple of new features in here as well, including private space. This is a feature we've seen on quite a few other phones, of course. It stores particularly sensitive files and photos away in a separate encrypted space so no one else can access it, only you using your biometrics. And of course, naturally, Origin OS includes a whole heap of AI bollocks, pretty much mandatory these days, including some AI features we already saw in FunTouch OS, like the Smart Call Assistant, which can summarize and translate your calls in real time. You got writing tools if you can't be bothered to actually think of stuff to say to people you know. And basically, the kind of smarty pants at guff you get on pretty much any smartphone you buy these days, unless it's an iPhone, obviously. Also, if you're actually friends with one of them, iPhone a lot, apparently it's easier to share files now than before. All they need to do is download the Easy Share app onto their iPhone, and then you can quickly and easily transfer photos, files, etc., just by grinding your phones together. And with Office Kit, you can mirror your Vivo phone screen on your PC or Mac and quickly transfer files once again. And there you have it, my lovelies. That in a tasty wee nutshell is the fresh new Origin OS 6 launcher from Vivo replacing good old fun touch. It does change up the vibe a wee bit, but the best bit certainly in my eyes is the improved customization. It's now easier to personalize your smartphone even more deeply than you could before. I'm yet to notice any real benefit when it comes to the actual speed of the animations and everything, the general flow, but maybe that's one of those things where you'll really notice a benefit after you've been using the phone for a good year or two. Things start to normally get a little bit sludgy, start to slow down a wee bit. Hopefully Origin OS will stay on top of things. Anyway, that's what this knackered old northern get reckons. Be great to your thoughts on Origin OS down in the comments below. Please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a rosy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everybody, love you!